In this video, I'm going to talk about what is next for WordPress. Version 5 just came out, but I'm going to talk about what's next. This was just the beginning of a change that's going to affect every single area of WordPress. I'm going to go over that in this video. Plus, I'm going to probably make some predictions that might not make everyone so happy regarding page builders and this new block builder that's out for WordPress. Actually, before I get into my whole spiel about uh, subscribing and all that kind of stuff. Let me go ahead and just do a quick live update of a site to version five of WordPress. I'll just come back in a moment for that. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I talk about WordPress videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button. If you don't want to miss a thing, click on that notification bell. Okay, it actually looks like we're still updating uh, right now. So if you haven't updated already, you might want to be a little careful and know that everything's going to work all right when you do. However, if you do update to Win uh, to WordPress version 5, I almost said Windows version 5, but WordPress version 5, there's an out. So right when you, it's actually doing it right now, I'll show you what you can do in order to have Windows version 5, but also just have it be the way that it was prior and not use the block builder. However, I love this block builder. And when you see what it can do, when you realize what it's going to do in the future, it's very impressive. Okay, so let me skip this because it's just taking a minute to update. And the first version of Gutenberg and this whole block builder going into WordPress, the idea was to just change the way you build content. But that is not the end of it. That is really the beginning of having this concept of having blocks take over your entire WordPress website. Now, the goal is not to make your life miserable or not to make your life more complicated and you have this new thing that you have to learn now. The goal is to make WordPress easier for all of us. And I can attest to having had lots of issues using the classic editor of WordPress in the past when it comes to formatting my text and just wanting to do a little bit more in there, you would always have to go back and use some kind of a short code. Now with that, this is what the screen looks like when you first update to version five. Now check this out. When you scroll down to the very bottom, there's this option right here that says keep it classic and what this is going to do there's a button here you click this and it's going to keep you with the classic editor you still get all the benefits of the latest version of wordpress but it will keep this classic editor and you can keep this plugin installed and activated till i think it's 2021 so there's years that you have that you can keep it the way that it is if that's what you want however this block builder is a game changer so first let me tell you uh, what's next with this block builder and kind of show you some cool things. And then I'll make my little prediction when it comes to page builders and how that fits in the mix. It's just a prediction could be spot on and it could be wrong. We'll see. Uh, only time will tell. Okay. So the first step was just the content for posts and pages and custom post types. The next step is for you to be able to use these blocks, this block builder in the widget areas. And so uh, this is probably what it's gonna look like initially, where right here for the widgets, they're actually blocks. And when you drag and drop your block over to the sidebar area, it will behave just like you're used to with using blocks to create content. This will probably be what the initial uh, of, uh, implementation of it looks like. And then it will go into something like this. And this is where you're you're editing a widget, which is in this sidebar, but you're doing it inside of the customizer right here. It's that same block builder. But where it's going to end up is like this, where you're not really even in the customizer or the back end of WordPress. You're just able to put those widgets in the sidebar, in the footer, or wherever your theme has widget areas. You're able to do that just straight on the screen like this. Now, if you ask me, this is something that WordPress has needed for a long time. There's always so many different areas for different parts of the page. It's not intuitive in the slightest. 
So if you're creating some content and you want to edit the sidebar, you got to know to go to the widget area, but it's a sidebar. Why is it called widgets? Then you go there and there's like five different sidebar locations and you can't have the same stuff you have in normal content there. It's a mess, but blocks is going to solve all of that. I look forward to the day when we can do it just like this for my sidebar, but that's not where it's going to end because it's also going to involve your menu. So right now, menus are the same thing. It's like you've got to go here to menu. If you have a restaurant, you might have confused that with a restaurant menu. So you go there and you start building it out. It's just going to be so much easier when it's reduced to a block that you can intuitively go to click on and you have your little options there on the side and you can see how it looks in real time. I am excited about that. So this is the second step of Gutenberg or this block builder. I want to stop calling it Gutenberg and just call it the block builder. So this is that next phase of what is going to come and it's exciting. It's a usability enhancement and you could do a lot more because there's a lot of different block styles that are coming out. So next there's two more phases that were announced that are the overall plan for the next three years of WordPress. So once this is a reality, what I just showed you with the sidebar and the widget areas and the menu, the next step is collaboration. So if you've ever used the Google Docs to collaborate on assembling a document, so you collaborated with other team members, you can even collaborate together at the same time in real time and see what each other are changing. Well, that kind of platform is going to be brought into or that kind of feature set is going to be brought into WordPress to collaboratively build the content of your website. I can't tell you for me uh, if every time I've worked on a website project with someone else, I got to say this is going to be a huge usability improvement, game changing experience to collaboratively build a website together. Now, who knows what that's going to look like because they haven't built it yet. However, I'm pretty excited that that's on the radar. Now, the fourth stage isn't as exciting depending on the type of websites you create, but I think it's so needed in WordPress and that is multilingual features natively built into WordPress. So right now you would use uh, what is it? Uh, Polylang or WPML and there's several other translation plugins for multilingual websites. However, in the fourth stage of this, which is probably like the later end, like 2021 or 22, those native multilingual features are going to be built into WordPress, which I think is fantastic because if the goal is to democratize publishing, if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. If that's the goal, then you really need tools like that built into the core of WordPress. Okay, so check this out. My predictions for this new block building experience. I know some people are resistant to it and there's various reasons why. Everyone that I've talked to that has actually used it and started using this block builder after probably about 15, 20 minutes, you're like, this is going to be amazing and it's going to improve my workflow. It's going to make it easier to build better looking content. But I got to say, I think that this block builder is going to be much more than that. So right now there's already a bunch of block add-on plugins that are in the WordPress plugin repository. You just go to plugins, add new, and there's a list of them. And I was testing several of these and I just was blown away by the quality of what you find in these blocks that are given away completely for free. And I think what's going to end up happening is this new block building interface is going to end up being the most powerful and flexible and feature full content tool out there. Not design tool, maybe design tool but content tool out there. So here, let me give you an example of what kind of made me uh, realize there's more than meets the eye here. So I don't have any page builders, I think on this site. So um, if I go right here and there's one add-on package I installed, uh, it's ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg and it's completely free. It's in the repo. You could do a search for ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. It's the same team behind Astra. I trust what they make because I use it on my own website. It's completely free. So 
they released an add-on pack and now some of these are features that you would typically find in a paid version of a page builder so they have an advanced heading but they also have a post grid so you can have a grid of your posts not, that didn't excite me, um, but I was impressed. But, you know, these are basic things we already uh, see and I already imagined coming. Multi-buttons info box, which is probably their most used module in all of the plugins that they make. Testimonial. I really like this one here, this restaurant menu. Actually, let me just show you because I like it. And you can go right here. You, you can increase the amount of menu items. You can increase the columns uh, for your menu. Let me uh, make that three. Uh, and you can add images, you have total design control. And I thought, wow, this is going to be really nice for anyone that needs to make a menu of services or a food or whatever. But that wasn't what excited me that really got my mind spinning. Let me show you what that was. So I'm going to go back down to ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg and it's right here section. So let me click on that and here it is. So the term section, what is that most used in? Page builders, that's the word used in Elementor. The uh, word for Beaver Builder would be row. It's equivalent to a row. And I think they use the the section uh, terminology as well in Divi. Well, ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg is seeing that, because well, they have probably already served so many people that use page builders, they created a section block. This is the cornerstone of page builder territory. So what you do is you use the section block and then we have settings for the section block. But then right here, what you do is you can then put a block inside of the section block. So you could go in here and you could put the two columns if you wanted. You can just have a single item in there. So uh, let me just go ahead and put something in there. This is totally unplanned. I'll just put an image. I hope I have an image uh, in this uh, website. Oh, thank goodness I do. Very good. <laughs> There we go. So I've got my image in there and it's in this section, but I can go right here and I have my section settings so I can have the content be full width. So when I do that, it's going to go edge to edge on the front end. Uh, I can control the width. I can change the spacing so I can put padding. I can put padding on the top, on the bottom, what you would expect in a section. Uh, then I can change my background if I wanted to. So the option, uh, let me just toss a gradient in there or something like that. Uh, there we go, just to throw something in there. Uh, and then you have control over a gradient, you could put a border, and there's your standard advanced stuff. So I uh, actually have no idea what this will look like. Let's go ahead and click on view page, and you can see there I have a full width section where I could set a background image or a solid color and I can have my content inside of that section and I can do padding. I can do all kinds of things. This is page builder territory. This is very impressive to me because I didn't see Gutenberg in this way. I thought it's just for assembling content, but I'm realizing you're going to be using Gutenberg to build your entire website and it's soon. Now, not only that, one thing that was mentioned recently that's gonna be coming to Gutenberg, that's gonna be coming to this block-based editor is when you go right here and you do a search for a block, if you don't have a particular block, that you'll be able to see blocks that are available right here and click one button to install and activate it and then you could start using it on your page on your content. That is mind blowing to me. So when you go and you look at the various blocks that people are building, including the ones here from Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, it's very impressive. It's very impressive what you're going to be able to do. Now, uh, I love page builders. I love Elementor and I use Elementor on my websites. I've used Beaver Builder and I still have it on several websites. And I have one Divi website and I enjoy Breezy. So here's four great page builders. And I think that uh, they don't have anything to worry about. I guess this is where I make my prediction. Uh, I don't think they have anything to worry about f for today <laughs> or for this year or maybe the next year and a half. But you can see that for most people, what you can do with the block based editor is going to be enough. And so when you look at 100% of the people that purchase a page builder, that purchase a page builder, um, uh, you've got different types of people 
in that 100%. You've got designers and you've got agencies and they depend on these design features. They, they depend on it uh, to deliver amazing design for their customers. But I would dare to guess out of 100% of buyers, you might have 75%, maybe more, maybe less, but let's just throw out the number 75% that Gutenberg would totally meet their needs and this block building experience would be all that they needed. So kind of what I uh, see might end up happening is that, you know, if you don't need the drop shadow and some of these fancy higher end design aspects to your website, this, this block building interface, that's going to be all that you need to build a beautiful website for yourself. That's fast loading and full featured. Uh, this is just going to actually end up being fine. So I actually don't see uh, any risk for like Elementor or Beaver Builder. I think their customer base, including me, because I'm one of their customer base. I'm going to continue using that tool for many years to come. And I'm excited to see all the things that those two builders do. I think Divi, I'm a little uh, afraid of not this year and, or next year, but in the long term future, because Elementor never had lifetime licenses. So if you're using Elementor, you're going to pay each year to continue getting updates and all these amazing features. The same thing for Beaver Builder. You're going to keep paying to get the support and the features to support them. You're not going anywhere. Uh, so if they didn't have as many new customers coming in the door, they're going to be just fine on renewals. But then you have Divi. I don't know what the Divi mix up is, how many is on a lifetime plan, how many is on an annual plan. But I would imagine if each three companies just lost 75% of their new customers, I think Elementor would be fine. I think Beaver Builder would be fine because they have these renewals. But then on Divi, I think that the it might hurt them some depending on what their mix up is of how many uh, are lifetime license holders and how many are the annual license holders because they might not have those renewals. And so that's the only thing I'd worry about. But ultimately, I know Divi, they're fantastic at content marketing, delivering value, delivering more than just a block experience. So I think they're going to all end up being fine. They all actually excel at that, delivering more than just these blocks. So ultimately, I think all these page building companies are going to end up doing fine. They're going to just need to focus on something other than what Gutenberg with the block building experience delivers. They just need to focus on other aspects of having a website, other tools that will not be covered in the block based interface. If they just focus on that, people are going to keep buying because you know, for me, if I could purchase a tool that's going to get me the goal or the end result faster, I'm going to go that route. I don't care if it's, um, you know, th these tools aren't that expensive. Beaver Builder is a hundred bucks. Uh, uh, Elementor is 50 bucks for a single site license. These aren't expensive tools. So they still are going to have a market. I do think though, it's going to be a little bit less of a market and the companies that are having annual renewal licenses, those are the ones that are going to end up being stronger at the end of the day. Anyways, that was a lot to go over in this video and that's just an opinion. And I would, I, I hope that I'm wrong because I love these companies. I've met all the owners of all of these companies, they're amazing people. They have amazing teams, amazing staff, but it's just hard to look at Gutenberg and not realize that a lot of people are just going to choose this block building interface, especially when they start integrating full design layouts into the interface of this block builder. Uh, it's just going to be hard, a uh, hard opportunity to pass up. Uh, however, our page builder tools are done by great companies uh, and I'm just excited for where things are going. I'm looking forward to WordPress being easier. This is the channel WordPress for non techies. And so anything that makes using and setting up a website uh, using WordPress easier, I am all for it. And that's why I'm supporting this block building experience. I think it's a great transition for WordPress and it's really what's going to set the next 15 years up for WordPress to make sure that it's relevant for what people want to build today on the internet. So anyways, uh, hey, if you enjoyed this video or found any kind of, of, of value in the opinions, uh, 
Consider giving this video a thumbs up. Remember to click on the subscribe and the notification bell. Seeing as how this was an opinion uh, type of video, what to what would really make it complete is to hear your opinion down below in the comment section. But we're going to keep it all uh, polite and nice. You know, if you're not a block building fan, that's okay. Um, you know, uh, you could say that down there, but let's just all be nice down in the comment section. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I know I haven't been here as much as I would like, uh, but I'm back and I will see you in the next video.